Hi, Lisa. Welcome back to the show here. It's great to have you on as always. Uh, it's been a while since we've had you on, but uh, you've got some great topics for us to cover, and uh, we've got a good, good one coming up this time around. Yeah, thanks, Jamie, for inviting me back. Um, it, it, there's a, a lot that's been changing in the drug abuse world, um, particularly with these synthetic drugs. And, and I'm sure most, if not all of your listeners, have heard of these synthetic drugs, things like synthetic marijuana and bath salts. But I'm not sure that your listeners have maybe heard or know a lot about drugs that go by the name of NBOM or gravel or flaca. So these are just a few of the, the many, many, many new drugs of abuse that are causing some serious effects right now. So I wanted to take the opportunity to provide a, somewhat of an update on these synthetic drugs. So synthetic drugs are basically drugs that are made to mimic other drugs of abuse. And those drugs of abuse might be cocaine or amphetamines or ecstasy, LSD, and even there's synthetic drugs that mimic heroin. So by tweaking the chemical structures and disguising the packaging, makers of the drugs try to avoid existing laws. And really, in a lot of cases, they're successful in doing that. The packages generally don't say what drugs are in there. They don't even say that there are any drugs in there. And there could be multiple drugs in there. So we would never really know. Uh, the drugs that we're now starting to hear about are drugs that we've never really seen before. And there's an alphabet uh, soup list of, of these drugs. We don't know a lot about their effects and toxicities until poison centers and EMS providers, emergency departments, until we all start seeing cases that are coming in with some serious effects. So the first one I want to talk about is synthetic marijuana. It's been around now for several years, and it's a common name for a group of drugs that act on cannabinoid receptors. Now, that's the same receptor that THC and marijuana acts on. But these synthetic drugs are much more potent. They attach to these receptors more tightly. And so the response or, or the effects that we see is often very different than what you would expect with marijuana. So for this reason... In toxicology, we like to refer to these drugs as synthetic cannabinoids and not synthetic marijuana, since the effects really aren't like marijuana at all. Now, typically, most cases have exhibited agitation, and they're very combative, and they have other stimulant-like effects, like tachycardia, hypertension, hyperthermia, chest pain, hallucinations, and they can be quite paranoid as well. Serious effects have included patients who have had MIs, seizures, acute kidney injury, and also stroke. Now, recently, we've seen some new synthetic cannabinoid drugs that have hit the streets, and they're resulting in pretty serious effects and, and a surge in hospitalizations in many states. From January 1st to May 6th of of uh, 2015, there have been more than 2,700 exposures reported to poison centers in the United States, which is almost four times the rate of calls in 2014 total, and more than the whole uh, number of synthetic cannabinoid calls in all of 2013. In many of the recent cases, a, a different clinical picture has emerged, and this, might, this is probably due to a new drug or an unknown drug or a contaminant. So the symptoms that we're seeing with a lot of these cases now are lethargy, coma, bradycardia, hypotension. We've had a number of case reports of uh, cardiac and respiratory arrest. People who buy these synthetic cannabinoid drugs have no idea what drugs have been added to the material to be smoked. So they don't know how potent it is. They don't know what effects they're really going to get. And when you respond to a patient who's used one of these products, you really should expect anything and everything. Uh, two other drugs that I wanted to talk about are gravel and flaca. Now, these are slang names for a newly discovered drug, which is a potent synthetic cathinone, and it's called alpha-PVP. Synthetic cathinones are the drugs that we usually refer to as bath salts, but packages are sometimes disguised as other types of everyday products like plant food, shoe deodorizers, ladybug attractants, or they can be sold online as research chemicals. Alpha PVP can be ingested, it can be snorted, it can be injected, or it also can be used in the e-cigarettes. It's believed that the drug inhibits the reuptake of dopamine and norepinephrine. These are two very important neurotransmitters. And this leads to prolonged stimulant effects, so they get this excited delirium. Um, think of these drugs as similar to methamphetamine or cocaine, only more potent. In Florida, where flaca has been a, a particularly big problem, it's reportedly led to a man trying to break down the door to a police station. There was a man that impaled himself while trying to scale a fence. And there was also an armed and naked man shouting about hallucinations from a rooftop. 
the paranoia, the hallucinations, the hyperstimulation can last for days, and it's been linked to deaths from jumping off of buildings as well as clinical effects like myocardial infarctions. It's an illegal drug in the United States as of February of 2014, but that hasn't stopped it from being imported from other countries. Mainly comes here from countries like China and Pakistan and India. The last drug I wanted to mention is N-bomb. Now, N-bomb is a slang name for a group of, of pretty novel psychoactive substances. The chemical names of these drugs include the letters N-B-O-M-E, and so that's where they get the slang name of N-bomb. It first became available in around 2010. It was mainly sold over the Internet as legal or natural LSD. The drugs uh, in this N-bomb class are serotonin receptor agonists, and uh, very similar to LSD, and they're so potent that sub-milligram doses are enough to produce the psychoactive effects. These NBOMEs are sold as blotter paper, powders, capsules, or liquids. They can be ingested, they can be sniffed, and they've even been inserted rectally or vaginally to be absorbed. The effects that have been reported have been um, effects like tachycardia, hypertension, agitation. They can be quite violent. They can have seizures. They can have hyperthermia. And so it does look, uh, this, this constellation of effects does look like an excited delirium, as well as acute kidney injury. And there have been at least 17 deaths in the United States that have been uh, reportedly from these NBOMEs since 2010. Treatment of any of these drugs is basically supportive care. Benzodiazepines are first line for the excited delirium, for the anxiety, and for seizures. Typical urine drug screens in hospitals don't test for any of these synthetic drugs of abuse. So in, in most cases, because it's not on the package and you can't test for them, the exact drug involved won't be confirmed. And it's important to call the poison center, not only for assistance in diagnosing and managing these patients, but also to report cases. Our data, when we get calls, the, the data is analyzed to get a, a much clearer picture of the effects of these synthetic drugs, and then, um, then we know the best way to treat them as well. And this poison center data is also used to pass laws against new synthetic drugs as they're discovered. So I, I would encourage you to always call your poison center to report any case of, of any of these synthetic drugs. And as a reminder, the poison center phone number is 800-222-1222. And it's really important to remind again, just like you just said, that, that we need to lean on the poison centers for, for assistance in these situations since we're not going to see, uh, likely get a confirmation of any kind of what exactly was ingested or, or, or um, brought into the body. Uh, so we need to use the poison centers and then the poison centers need us so we, they can provide the data they need to uh, find out what's going on in the community. That's exactly right. We really need to work together so that we know what to expect with these drugs, know what's out there, and um, and try to get them off the streets. It's really hard to pass laws to get them off the street, but almost all of the laws that have been passed um, in states and local jurisdictions as well as regulations by the DEA have used poison center data. So it's, it is very important to, to call and report these cases. Even if all you can do is supportive care, we still want to hear about them. Great, Lisa. Well, thanks for coming on, and we'll uh, look forward to your next segment in, in a month or so. Sounds good. Thanks, Jamie.